Oh, but you know, that reminds me, speaking of, um, of uh, Democracy Now!, there was a, a former uh, reporter from Democracy Now! named Aaron Maté. Uh, I didn't know who, he was on Democracy Now! He worked now. there? Yes. I know that only because he um, has, I think, has has claimed that they have become, he's become very disappointed in how oh. imperialist, pro-imperialist they've become. Well, I, I, that's, when I think of pro-imperialist, I certainly think of Democracy Now! Um, and... They're acting like shit lips. Uh, apparently, it's my understanding that in my absence, um, there was, uh, when Nomi was on, um, she had made a statement about him that um, uh, that he has taken issue with. Now, I, I, I want to be uh, clear about something. Um, I, I, I want to be clear about something right now, actually. Um, Democracy now does pro-imperialist propaganda. They often do it uncritically, okay? You can see video after video of mine where I call them out. Now, with that said, sometimes they, they get things right, and I, I give them credit when they do that. They get it right on Cuba. They get it right on Palestine. Oftentimes, they get it right in, like, Central and South America. For, for whatever reason, they don't seem to do a good job in the rest of the world. Uh, specifically, they participate uh, uh, breathlessly in the Russia... Excuse me. They participate breathlessly in the China bad propaganda, uh, in specifically what I would like to refer to as, you know, the new Cold War, uh, which also includes participating in Russia bad propaganda, um, which they also do on Majority Report. Now, they do it beyond just the talking about, you know, the alleged war crimes. They uh, they 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 do it. So stop doing it. Be more consistent. My knowledge of this guy is extremely limited. Up until actually uh, today, I had never read anything by him. Well, this was actually an interview, uh, uh, the, the Chaz Friedman one. Um, but my only experience of this guy starts with about 30 years ago. I did a commercial I was hired to do a commercial for the U.S. Open. Oh. Uh, did you ever, did I ever tell you about this? No. Which one? The golf or the tennis? The, the golf, the uh, tennis. <laughs> and it was with this other guy. And we did these like really stupid spots on like, a, you know, uh, with the, uh, on, on like a, on the roof of a, like a, some tall building in the middle of midtown Manhattan. But then okay. we moved up to where, uh, where they, they do the tennis tournament. Mm -hmm. and, Arthur Ashe. Uh, yeah. And... I shot a promo for the next day for the finals on the court with, I think it was either Pete Sampras or Boris Becker. Wow. And I was How literally- I can't remember which one. I, I, I can't remember that, but I was so on the cool. court. I literally had to run out onto the court as they were playing. Wow. And it was one of the most incredible things I had ever seen. The, the, the how, you know, I used to play tennis when I was a kid. Right. But I never realized how hard they hit the ball. I mean, it was a totally different game at that level. We have the video. And I mean, I well, well, it's not important. Not important. Maybe later. It, but, but it's out there. But <laughs> I'll watch it later. Um, and it was then when I understood why, because I was always flummoxed, like, why would someone be a ball boy? And it is the fuck to is see, this story? like, to be on the court. Yeah. At that moment, is really exciting. And I bring that up only because my entire experience with Aaron Mate I was wondering where you're going with this. has been when I have gotten into like Twitter beefs with like, I don't know, with Jimmy Dore or uh, um, uh, Glenn Greenwald or something like that. He shows this up is lazy. like he's a ball boy, like completely out of nowhere. You see how they're just associating them with people that they know that their audience doesn't like so that they can epistemologically deplatform them in the minds of their audience, creating an artificial ceiling for their uh, for the understand uh, their audience's understanding of what's actually happening in the world. They're actually doing their audience a disservice.
Hunter shows up in these uh, these fights, and I'm like, what? Who are you? Why are you here? Yeah, and he's uh, kind of like a barnacle. No, I just it he reminds me of a ball boy. Okay. Anyways, so I, I just want to make that clear. Uh, but Matt, uh, these guys have been on you for some type of like uh, correction. So here is the clip uh, that we were talking because about I, of no, of Nomi. Yeah. You can spend your time doing whatever. It's about democracy now. Mate's doing is denying genocide all day long. This is about democracy now, and they made it about Aaron Mate. Because that's that's also a path to making a lot of money on the internet. Okay, so um, so they participated in the Uyghur genocide myth. Uh, you agree with the likes of AP News and uh, and and Adrian Zenz? You're like literally doing CIA propaganda. Oh, 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 you can go ahead and browbeat us all you like, but you haven't done the fucking work. Why don't you go ahead and look into it? Where are the claims coming from? The fuck out of here. And apparently. Um, Nomi was talking about the, um, says, uh, it says everything you need to denial. know, says everything you need to know, need to know about these content creators of the Uyghur genocide. And yeah. here's and an example. To be fair, from my perspective, uh, <laughs> Em and I could have maybe stepped in to clarify that I'm a little bit sensitive to that criticism, but anyway, it's, here is the uh, substance to that. And here is, and, and this is where, uh, Aramate says, um, I guess in response to Josh ago, Rogan um, saying China using Imagine in the Beijing 2020 opening ceremony. John Lennon must be rolling over in his grave. Imagine if there was no Uyghur genocide. And Mate says, that. "Imagine pretending genocides to score political points with your audience, not having looked into the claims yourself. Imagine doing that. Irresponsible. Um, again, doing their audience a disservice." But I guess that's how you pay the bills over there at Majority Report. There is no Uyghur genocide. And it's, you it's definitely not popular to take my position. I only know that I can only imagine there being no neocon propagandists. The world would be a safer place. Now, yeah. uh, I, I think... Uh, yes. Figure out what neocon propaganda... Like, 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 Sam Cedar should get this. Sam, you should be getting this. Why aren't you getting it? I think you know why you're not getting it. Out loud, at least. Uh, the world would be a safer place without uh, neocon propaganda. So I agree with that. Um, and and, knew. and to be fair, there is a controversy over whether there has been a Uyghur genocide in China. Oh, there does not. Oh, well, there's controversy. Seem to be any controversy as far as I can tell. I mean, I'm looking at the Human Rights Watch, which I am sure. Um, yeah, keep digging. Where do they get their information? Has been cited. Uh, well, I don't know for a fact by our mate, but uh, Human Rights Watch has been uh, cited certainly in, um, you know, in the context of, uh, of other situations. And I can understand the criticism know. of saying we should not use the term genocide lightly. Um, I mean, it's the you shouldn't pretend things that aren't really happening that you have no good reason to believe are actually happening. So, yeah, maybe don't use it lightly. I, like I'm critical of people calling the war in Ukraine a genocide. That's right. Like Putin said, uh, Ukraine is doing a genocide. No, genocide. Ukraine saying Putin's doing a genocide. Like this is a politically operative term. Yes. Um, but I w can I just say like my but piece, I like I'm. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big smelly butt, dude. I'm like certainly skeptical of certain neocon propagandists talking about this. Like Marco Rubio talking about genocides. Well, it's like when people like that are talking about it, I need to know what we're defining as a genocide it's like with when i see like what's going on with the uyghurs like cultural genocide seems like a watchword to at least be concerned about uh with regards to that and why is that one of their claims is that oh they're doing that because they're not allowing the uyghurs just to, to like speak their own language but guess what that actually applies to what's happening in ukraine to the to the the, the you know to the russians that are living in ukraine and, uh, but I don't think, say, like Marco Rubio is uh, as sensitive to what a cultural genocide is as, say, I would want to be. Well, does Marco Rubio believe that the United States committed the genocide of Precisely. Native Americans? Um, does he perceive the... Uh this is how they do it. They just like go, oh, someone takes this position and they go, oh, well, do they think this? So they give themselves an artificial level of understanding of the world. But guess what? It's a time saver. It's a time saver. It's a shortcut in, in the world. Shortcuts cut back, unfortunately. And by doing this, by like acting like you know things that you don't know, 
you're doing yourself a disservice of understanding the world yourself. You're also giving yourself an, uh, an artificial under, uh, ceiling of understanding, but you're also doing that for your audience. This, again, is irresponsible. Get Emma off the fucking air, dude. She's trash. Uh, continued shut occupation. Shut the fuck of, up, Emma. Uh, <laughs> Geopolitical understanders can shut the fuck up about geopolitics, okay? Stop pretending to be a geopolitical understander. What did I say? Geopolitical pretenders, right? Like, go do the work. Go look into it, dude. Of Palestine, of the West Bank and Gaza as a cultural genocide um, in and of itself. Because then... Okay, this is actually perfect. Because just like Democracy Now!, Majority Report does a good job with Palestine. Um, They probably do a good job with Cuba, right? But they fuck up a lot of other things. And if we're using a term... Like that, that, it all depends on the context of who's using it and why they're using and it and what they mean. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, I've been out for a couple of weeks. So I haven't followed this. Why don't you use it in the context of whether or not it's true? At least as early uh, as recently as the first or second week in March, there were something like two hundred uh, human rights groups. You cannot trust these people on certain topics. They're inconsistent at best, just like Democracy Now, and that's why they're triggered by someone like. Aaron Mate criticizing democracy now, and they're not even getting to the criticism. Like we haven't heard anything about it. Who had written a? An you notice that letter. we haven't heard anything about what democracy now said, and about what the the criticism was. Man, this is pathetic. Get your clicks to the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. They had done a report on the Chinese government uh, rights violations targeting Uyghurs. Um. Uh, Uyghurs, I should say. And thank you for saying, thank you for someone being in Sam's ear correcting him. <laughs> Sam knows so much about this that someone's got to be in his ear correcting him live. Um, I don't think that there's any controversy that I don't know how many, if it's uh, hundreds of thousands. Just um, pretend. Yeah, just make it up. Make it up as you go. Uh, Uyghurs have been. Essentially, um, by the way, that figures climbed down from two million uh, on democracy. Now, no more than a few years ago, they had someone, uh, a Hudson Institute shill talking about how there were two million Uyghurs in these camps. And then next time they were on, it was down to a million. And now now they're down to, I don't know, uh, 100,000. Do you see how this is working? Soon it's going to be, I don't know, tens, dozens a handful. There was just two or three. Like, how many, dude? Make it up. Uh, just, just figure out what your answer is. Stop know, making it up as you go. Concentrated into camps. Uh, Why were they in labor the camps? camps? That there is labor camps. Guess what, uh, Sam Cedar? If you actually care about the Uyghurs in China, you wouldn't be doing this right now. Guess what? Lies about labor camps actually hurt the Uyghurs. Because people are less likely to hire the Uyghurs because they're a little bit worried about more inspection into their businesses. Some people need to shut the fuck up. Sam Cedar is one of them, and uh, so is Emma Vigeland. This is a bad show, and if you watch this to be informed, you're being misinformed. It's an assault on them uh, based upon their, their being Uyghurs, and it is uh, controversial as to how many of these people have been killed. Um, Just make it up, so, Sam. The violence has broken out. And at the very least, there is a cultural erasure it's not true. Uh, that there's is no, happening. That, there's no reason to believe that. Seems actually very similar just in pattern to American genocide of the Native Americans. Mm -hmm. like a, a <laughs> You can't believe this show, dude. A major nation state expanding infrastructure into, you know, parts of the hinterlands that go through populations that aren't quite ready to, or willing to, uh, you know, uh, meld in. And, and you can make it. Uh, this is the definition of shit liberty. And, and you can have a debate about the precision of those kinds of terms. Like we're having a nuanced conversation about that now, but I think an outright denial is. Well, that's fine. I, mean, I would certainly go. A, uh, a denial is not okay, but pretending something's happened is okay. There it is. Hey, you guys got a really shitty show. It's not a good show. 
you should not have done this segment at the very least. Again, you're, you you do good stuff, but you also do really bad stuff on the majority report. Um, stay the fuck away from shit you don't know. Um, because y'all are presenting it like you do. Okay? That's what I would say about this. Yeah, I think at the very Too least, far. that is our, uh, clarification. Um, that, um, uh, that, uh, he seemed to have wanted. And that clarification is that, um, he says there is no Uyghur genocide. And, um... I will be clear, there's no reason to believe that there is, that there is one. Yet yeah, they think there's every reason to pretend that there is one. And I think I know why they're doing it. Money, 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 money! They can't lose their audience. Their Certainly. liberal, their shit liberal audience that they're also misinforming. They have an opportunity to inform their shit liberal audience, but they're shitting the bed on that too. It is Rest in power, Michael Brooks. Is um, there is controversy as to whether there is a Uyghur genocide? Mm. I didn't realize that we were called upon for the. I, I, well, the, apparently uh, through Twitter, there has been uh, you know a big issue. There. The ombudsman ah. spoken. So there we go. Okay. Um. Thanks for watching my clip about the majority report. <laughs>